You are listening to episode 79 of the Style and Stewardship podcast. So today we're going to be talking about the liver. We're going to be talking about the processes that it does, how to help it do those processes, and also the different things that you may not be aware of that the liver does, especially when it comes to cleansing our bodies and detoxifying. So I'm also going to be um, talking about something that I love very, very much, which is the natural things that God gave us, like herbs, um, using them as medicinals and as just just an, an amazing way to support your wellness, support your health. And I hope that you learned something on this episode. I learned a lot as I was just researching this, and I hope that it is encouraging to help you on your wellness journey. So without further ado, this is episode 79. So first, let's talk about where the liver actually is located. So your liver, if you were to um, put your hand right where your rib cage is, right underneath, say, um, what's the best way I'm trying to, I'm like sitting here, like putting my hand, (laughs) it's kind of funny, but it's going to be on the upper right part of where your stomach is. Um, And it's actually about the size of your hand, um, actually a little longer than that because the other part of it kind of extends across um, the other side of your your abdomen. So it's a really, really big organ. It's really, really vital and it does so many amazing things. So first off, you know, this other than, you know, we have our kidneys, we have our skin, we have a lot of other things that detoxifies our body. But as far as um, just major organs, that's going to be your liver and your kidneys, especially your kidney, your liver. So let's talk about what the liver actually does. And then we'll talk about how to support it and one of my favorite herbs to do so. So this has the function, the major function of detoxification. So your liver is going to, um, it's really responsible for filtering and detoxifying harmful substances. So that's going to be stuff like drugs, including, um, you know, over the counter, you know, even just our aspirin or, or ibuprofen or any of those things. It has to detox all of those things and metabolize all those things. Alcohol, any metabolic waste process. And then it, what it does is it converts those toxins into less harmful compounds so the body can actually get rid of it and eliminate it from the body completely. This also plays a role in our metabolism. So this is like, it plays a central role actually. So it metabolizes nutrients that we take in, including our carbohydrates, our proteins, and our fats, you know, our, our main macro groups. And then it converts them into energy or it stores them for later use. Bile production. The liver produces bile. So, you know, we've heard of, you know, someone having a gallbladder and having it removed and things like that. So the gallbladder doesn't produce bile. It just stores it. That's why it's actually called gallbladder. So bile bladder. Um, It actually just holds onto it. So if you don't have your gallbladder or, you know, if someone, you know, has had it removed, they still are having bile production and it's just dripping in in their um, digestive juices um, as they eat. So they still produce bile, but it's really, really important and it's essential for our digestion and for the absorption of fat. So that is what bile is created to do, is created to actually absorb fats. So it's stored in the gallbladder, as we, we spoke about before, and it's released into the small intestines whenever it's needed. So that's going to be stimulated by actually eating. And that's one of the secretions that um, that comes out as we're eating things that are fatty. So say someone has their gallbladder removed, what they have issues with is eating things that are high fat um, because their body isn't just, you know, producing it as it needs it. It's just constantly just dripping. So protein synthesis is something else that the liver actually does. And this synthesizes just various proteins, including albumin, which helps maintain the osmotic pressure in blood vessels. It also controls and maintains the clotting factors. And this is necessary for our blood to literally clot, you know. So storage of vitamins and minerals. So these are what we like to refer to as fat-soluble vitamins, right? And the liver is 
the liver stores all these essential vitamins. So you're, that's going to be your vitamin A, D, E, K, and it also stores vitamin B12 and minerals, iron, and copper. And they store, your body stores that. Anything that's stored is for later use or for use whenever the body, you know, deems it necessary. So the liver is the main function. So the liver, you know, synthesizes all of the, this protein that has to happen in our bodies and be metabolized and used. So this also, the liver also regulates our blood glucose levels. So it helps regulate blood sugar levels by storing excess glucose as glycogen, which you may have heard if you've ever weight trained, and it releases it when it is needed. So this is, you know, this is why it's important that when we're eating things like carbohydrates, that if we're not, if we're eating more than the body can use right then and there, or store for later use, the body ends up taking it and it has nowhere else to store it. The liver is full and whatever, you know, energy that you needed, it it doesn't need it. <laughs> you know, especially if you're eating a whole bunch of carbs and then sitting down, those things are just going to sit in our in our bodies if our if it can't be stored. It's just going to go back into our bloodstream and it's going to cause issues like blood sugar dysregulation. We'll talk about that in another episode. I think I have already spoken about it in in an episode, but I have a more in-depth episode that I'm going to do in the future about blood sugar um, and blood glucose, blood sugar um, dysregulation. So our liver, whatever, you know, and then our our, um, glycogen stores get used when we exercise. So that's when the body literally just pulls it out of the storage and it uses it to do things like, you know, lift heavy weights or do something where its strength training is involved. So it's really, really important that we don't overeat um, when it comes to carbohydrates. We'll, like Again, we'll talk about that in another one. But it's interesting that it's the liver that stores this excess glucose. So anything the body can't use right then is going to store this as ex- excess as glycogen. And it's going to release it when it needs it. So it also produces glucose through a process called gluconeogenesis. That, again, we're not going to discuss in this episode. What else does the liver do? It detoxifies ammonia. So the liver converts toxic ammonia produced during protein metabolism into urea, which is eliminated from the body through, guess what, your urine. So it's, I mean, it's amazing what the liver does. Synthesis of cholesterol. So it's involved in the synthesis of cholesterol, which is essential for the production of our hormones, vitamin D, and the formation of cell membranes. Storage and release of red blood cells. The liver stores a certain amount of blood and can release it into circulation when it's needed. This helps to maintain blood volume and pressure our immune system. So immune function, the liver plays a a crucial role in the body's immune system by producing immune factors, removing bacteria and toxins from the bloodstream, and helping to fight infections. And we spoke about blood clotting, um, but it literally creates these clotting factors that help the proper coagulation of the blood. So that will literally keep us from getting, you know, bleeding, just bleeding out. You know, if you get a cut or a deep, you know, gash of some kind, it's the liver that is producing these clotting factors that keeps your body from just continuing to pour out of your body. It's pretty amazing how God made our bodies. And then the metabolism of medications. I touched on this before, but the liver metabolizes many medications and drugs, breaking them down into active or inactive forms that can be used or eliminated by the body. So every time we're taking something over the counter or a medication that we may be taking, this is causing our liver to work really, really hard and work overtime. So that's why it's really, really important that we're taking things as needed. We're not taking things forever because the body is constantly having to quote unquote detox and metabolize all of the things that the body can't use and get it out of the system. So that's why it's super, super important that our liver is functioning well and that it is being 
you know, given all the things that it needs to do its job to do the proper functions. And there are several things that we can do to support our liver. But today I wanted to specifically talk about an herb that I started taking about three weeks ago. I've literally bought boxes and like shipped it to family members because after I was, you know, doing this research and I was looking into this, you know, because I'd started using it and I thought, oh my goodness, I've got to like literally share this with other people because it's absolutely amazing. So these, those were just some of the essential functions that are performed by our liver. And it's this complex organ that plays so, so many crucial roles in maintaining our overall health. Like we need our liver, we need it to function well, we need to treat it well. So how can we do that? So the herb that I wanted to highlight today is milk thistle. So this is amazing at supporting your liver and its functions. Um, the botanical name that you may find will be silly, silly bum marianum or just silly marin. And that's actually the active um, property and it's a medicinal property that is found in milk thistle. And it's this really, really pretty purple, kind of light purple um, plant. It's kind of, it's in the daisy family. It's just this cute little plant and you would never know that it did all of these things. But apparently many people know and have known for hundreds and hundreds of years and have been using it. So it's been used for centuries as medicine in other countries. So this active compound known as silymarin is believed to be responsible for all of its therapeutic effects. It has amazing benefits and it can be used as a supplement. It can be used um, in supplement form, in tincture, tincture form, or in tea form. My favorite way to actually take this, like I said, I bought some sent boxes to family members, is in tea form. I think that is one of the easiest ways to use an herb because you don't really, you know, you're taking a pill and you're kind of wondering what's going to happen. But with a tea, you can steep it, you know, for a strong brew or you can, you know, just lightly steep it. Take a couple of sips for from, you know, that tea and wait and see how you feel and then come back to it. I love, love, love using teas and I have a plethora of um, medicinal teas that I love to use but I have been drinking um, milk thistle for the last couple of weeks every single morning and it has been anyways it's been amazing let me tell you why this is so good so this one right here this milk thistle it helps the body in so many ways and I already said it's been used for hundreds of years, but it's also been studied in several clinical trials. It's considered a powerhouse for the liver since our liver is, you know, the body's main detox or one of the body's main detox organs. We want to support the health of our liver as much as we possibly can. So milk thistle benefits. So it protects the liver from chemicals and exposure to toxins, just as we were talking about earlier, you know, chemicals thing you know that are toxic to the body or that the body can't you know easily rid itself of or if there's just a buildup of toxins this actually helps the liver do its job so it helps um get rid of those chemicals and ex um the toxic exposures it also helps conditions like non-alcoholic fatty liver disease right directly tied to the fat buildup on the liver i mean seriously it it just blows my mind how much it does. Hepatitis, it helps cirrhosis, insulin resistance, and diabetes. So it's an antioxidant and antioxidant and an anti-inflammatory, and it's been used to support our healthy liver function. Milk thistle seeds have been shown to have good radical scavenging activity, which means that it's going to protect our cells from free radical damage. So I just wanted to read to you some of these um, clinical trials that were done. So in a controlled 12 month study on individuals with insulin treated diabetes. So these are people that had to be injected with insulin and alcoholic cirrhosis showed that treatment with silymarin, the active ingredient in milk thistle, significantly decreased their insulin overproduction by removing the need for insulin administration. So these people no longer had to have insulin injections after this 12-month study. Silymarin was also shown to reduce oxidative stress by mitigating hypoperoxidation of cell membranes and insulin resistance. 
So the lipo peroxidation is a process that leads to cell damage and can ultimately lead to cellular death. Another study of patients treated with 600 milligrams a day of silymarin demonstrated lower fasting insulin. In another group that was treated with 200 milligrams three times a day before meals, there was a significant reduction in blood glucose levels. So that was a study that was done um, in 1997. So there's so much on the books, but I just pulled the ones that I thought were really, really, um, really, really cool. So when we're talking about milk thistle, not take it. (laughs) So like anything else, we can have these amazing benefits and we can have these, these foods and herbs and and ingredients that can be amazing for some and not so amazing for others. And that's why it's so important to know our own bodies and what our bodies can actually utilize and, and be benefited by because everything does not work for everybody. God made us very distinct, very unique. And of course, there is bio individuality. We have so much variance in DNA and genes and what our bodies are, Um, even the different toxins that we may be exposed to that someone else may not be. These things just are really, really helpful to keep in mind before you take anything. Obviously, consult your doctor if you're going to be taking anything. If you are a nursing mom, pregnant, all of those things check with your doctor. Obviously, I have heard that this was used to um, actually help the mom's milk increase, Um, but so, so do several other herbs. So make sure that you're checking with your doctor before you take anything. So um, when you're taking any herb, if you have any sort of allergies, you want to be careful. So I'm going to put a link to the full list of things that this is in the same family of. So a lot of times herbs are in the same family as some other um, botanicals that you may have issue with. And if you have issues with those other ones, you might have issues with this one. I'm going to um, just say a couple of them, but I'm also going to list, um, I'm give you a link that lists all of them. So anything that's in the ragweed, chamomile, sunflower, artichoke, dandelions, or daisies, since this is in the daisy family, you might want to avoid milk thistle. It's not no- known to cause any major issues unless you have allergies like we spoke about but for some people it can cause issues in the stomach like bloating diarrhea and nausea for some people i have not had any issue with it whatsoever in case you are wondering what milk thistle actually tastes like again i had it in a tea form you can also get it in supplement form i am going to leave a link to the supplement brands that I know and trust, and also the the specific tea that I'm drinking. It blends really, really well with other teas, so keep that in mind. I actually like to put two tea bags, and that is going to be the milk thistle as well. I like to use an unbleached bag, organic, and um, I like to put a mint tea bag in mine. So I really, really love um, the way that flavor, that flavor combination, and it keeps me from adding any sugar to my to my tea. My husband had the tea, and he added honey. He, he said that it tastes just like like a mild black tea. I think that it tastes like a little bit like an English breakfast tea, just slightly. But it doesn't really have a strong, strong flavor. It's a very mild flavor. It doesn't taste like a bunch of grass like some of the teas that I drink <laughs> do. I do drink for medicinal purposes and for wellness purposes. I sometimes drink and eat things that are not very tasty, but I'm doing it for the benefit So I just had to share that, but it tastes like a milder English breakfast tea, in my opinion. You can add, um, you know, whatever you like to it, just like you add to any other tea. But if you give this a try, I would love to know um, what your experience was like. Again, you know, use your discretion, your own um, judgment when it comes to what will work for you and what you are, you know, what you're trying as far as in your wellness journey. Again, if you are pregnant nursing, lactating, all of those things, Um, or if you're taking any medications, you always want to be careful about taking any herbs that are medicinal in nature, because again, you don't want to negatively affect your wellness. That would be (laughs) counterproductive. That's not what we're here for. We're here to help you on your wellness journey. And I hope that this was helpful because this was something that was not even on my radar and just reading through one of my herbal books. And I was like, huh, let me try this because I was looking for liver support. 
Um, so anyways, I hope that this was interesting. I hope that you learned something. I know I learned a ton as I was re researching this. I just wanted to give you those, um, just the bullet points of just this amazing, amazing herb. I cannot wait to share some other things that I've learned along the way in hopes that it will help you on your wellness journey. You can send any questions that you have, any even comments that you may have um, to me at styleandstewardship.com and you can just send those through hello at styleandstewardship.com and in the subject line, you can just put pod or pod questions. Can't wait to hear from you. Can't wait until episode 80, which is coming up. And until next time, your life matters. What you do with it matters. So what will you steward well? Peace.